Welcome back, James. Put it away, you scumbag. Put it away. Welcome back to Face the TV, guys. <laughs> Welcome back. We have Copenhagen Worlds, of course, against Unwanted as the last match here for the EU closed qualifiers. For tonight, of course, we're going live again tomorrow to conclude the EU closed qualifiers here for the Face It League, that 50k league. But uh, Copenhagen Wolves and Unwanted, two fantastic teams with ridiculous amounts of individual skill on both sides. And I've got to say that uh, Copenhagen Wolves, they did really well at, um, at Gamescom at ESL 1, but not quite well enough, my poor, my poor skins. Easy um, skins, <laughs> easy life. Yeah, so uh, it's going to be an interesting one. Anything you want to say about this? I know that you have, I think you're an eco fan. An eco fan? Eco, well, I, well, I said something else, but let's go with that. An eco fan. Nico. Nico fan. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking. Yeah, I I am a Nico fan. Like the Nico. Um, not a Nico fan though. Not at the moment. No. Maybe if uh, Valve delete the CZ, I might be a Nico fan again. I'm I a P250 fan. I'm a purist. I'm a. Yeah, I'm a I man. Know. I'm a man's man. Real men use the P250. You, didn't you name your P250 the Pain? Right? Isn't that? I did. I did. But it? my I, I have some of my guns are named after uh, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2 bosses from Cobra unit, but like nobody knows that because they're all PC players and they don't get the reference. So, so um, why did you do it? If, if it was going to fall it's for me, damn it. Or blind eyes, then yeah, nobody gets it at all. But I, I get it. So, all right, but I that's enough that about works. my gun naming yeah. habits. Yeah. Definitely, I, I'm curious to see. Do you think Unwanted is going to be a team that sticks around, maybe finds an organization, or do you think it's going to be the same story? It depends. I, I, I'm all for longevity. You know, the longer, the longer you are. The longer you, sorry, the longer you are together, <laughs> not the longer you are. The longer you are. You are. <laughs> I'm six to four, so I suppose I'm kind of long. The longer you are, oh, I said it again, damn it. The longer you are together, the more <laughs> stable you should be. Um, you know, the short, the short-term changes again and again don't really work out for the best most of the time. Like we've seen recently, uh, Modi left a team he was in for all of two to three weeks, and that's you know, that just that just means instability for the team so um i i hope any any five stick together as long as they can get on with each other enough yeah. to play to play matches then um you know i mean i feel like Fnatic really gave it a good shot with their old lineup absolutely they, they yeah really no one can gave uh, it a good shot like i was i was expecting it for quite a while at the same time they looked like they had you know they were great friends together yeah. like a lot of it worked out of the game and so you know especially but if you know at the end of the day they just weren't getting the results that they wanted, and they just couldn't find the. They couldn't get the the groove going. So yeah, but, but then you know, often crimson. <laughs> when one <laughs> of your teammates point. is kicking badges in the street, you gotta you gotta you gotta get a new teammate. Sometimes, man. Yeah. Sometimes you gotta you gotta switch some people around. You need to you need to group him with other badger kicking. You people. don't look like a badger abuser, I have to say. But it's always the quiet ones, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I think you we're gonna know. be heading towards the the knife round here. Yes, and I. We can see the lineups here. It's just so dangerous. You know, we have the uh, the X in the LGB trio, and you know, XM Michael Ale. I I always see XM still. I always see XM still. Speak Either way, he's been he's become the beast, the, an the the biggest animal I've seen in a while. He's become such a great fragger. In I the want I want to see this. Last few months. I want to see this. Well, the knife round, you mean, or just the match in general? I want to see the, the, these beasts that you're talking about. The, the beasts inside. You know, CSGO Lounge made a tweet um, a week or two ago asking if they should allow the betting of knives. I, d I right. don't think they should because uh, I don't know what these kids are going to do when they lose their lives to me, man. They're going to be... The hate mail is going to be real for the for the players, and that's that's nobody wants that. If you feel like your life is going to be threatened. By it's, that too, it's, too, it's too... It's too... It's too... It's uh, too... Real. It's just too much on the line, man. And look at this! Look at the line here. Yeah, this is teams. this is what this is like uh, watching 300, but it's more like four since it's four versus four. <laughs> but you know, just hold just hold it's the line, like 300, guys. But four. Hold the line. If one of the, if one of them breaks ranks, it's all gonna fall apart. Here we go. Oh no! And it was see pimped. see. And it all comes tumbling down, but it's it's oh two and one. PB. See, they've got to stick together now. They've got to stand together. Don't chase. There's no need to chase. Just stand together. Stand on each other's like heads. Stand together forever like best friends, you know? Because how do they... They've both been tagged here. So uh, one of them could... Oh, that's a bad miss. What a miss, yeah. Yeah, if, w if one of them gets taken out and the positioning's wrong, then we could see another another clutch knife round. But uh wasn't to be... We actually commentated a um, uh, knife round, James. Well, well it, it, was, it was some discussion. I wouldn't call it a play-by-play, -play, but just... You know, I just wanted to see them hold the line. You know, we could, we could, we oh could, we could go into more uh, complicated, 
kind of formation. Yeah. Like uh, in Gladiator, Diamond! <laughs> diamond! <laughs> You know. Gladiator, man. No, maybe people will get that one. I'd love to see a diamond formation in Knife Man. That would be awesome. I want to see the uh, the flying V. Flying V. Yeah, oh you know, man. Mighty Duck. Flying V is a top tier tactic. You it know what? I'm going to do that next time. Next time. Next time we we have a we play a mix on Face It. We're yeah. doing a flying V. Oh yeah. All right. Mighty Duck reference. Anyone? Here? Anyway, um, here we go. We have <laughs> a bit called leftover now. That's even more depressing. Um, this oh no, actually, actually that's Kevin Hagenwalls, he's uh, left over for that team name, but uh, Kevin Hagenwalls and Unwanted here on the pistol round. And so for the sake of, like for the benefit of the users in. at home, who is SMM? He's a badass. Fair enough. That's all you need to know. And SMF, he's, just, he's proving how much of a badass he is, he's holding down the box there. And it is going to be... Michael Ayle and PB to actually take the site though. Into a two on two, we have Nico and Cajun B remaining here. But and they uh, have a great angle actually coming in from Cajun they B. They don't know where Cajun B is, they have no idea. This is really, really good positioning from Cajun B if they peek together now. And Cajun B, did he see a head there? I don't think he did. And he was he will know he's there now trying to get the shot through and he's alerting Michael Ayle to his position. Nico, is he going to go for it? He's just going to go for the hold. Oh, this is so smart. He's, oh, he's going to get it. Oh, barely gets it. And there go the party poppers and the balloons. Because Nico, it, well, it's not as good as was crafty, That was an unfortunate plant because um, they smart. made it difficult. Like, if the guy on site goes down, it's a, it's a difficult it's a difficult angle to get the headshot, as we saw when the CT was going for yeah. it, and then the T. So, uh, unfortunate for Unwanted, but they will be able to buy round three as they did get the bomb plant. Yep. So, that is a bonus $800 per person. And they're getting the peak down mid there just to check to see what they can see. And obviously... See what they can see, do what they can do. And they don't see it all that much. And that's going to probably give them a good idea that, you know, the players aren't charging up B. Up towards the up banana, up towards B. So they're, they're probably thinking, okay, we know that they have some pistols. It should be pretty likely, as you know, you were describing previously in the last match. Close quarter combat is really good for the CZs, of course. So mm. they're going to be expecting that. Trying to maximize their ranges could be very powerful in this round to try to survive against this this eco here. You can see Nico's on the eco. See what I did there for the AWP. Only with the uh, USP in hand, a nade and two flashes. So he'll use the flashes to back off maybe to library if he sees the CZs coming his way. Unwanted running out of time slowly but surely here to take the bomb fight and then plant the bomb. It's going to be a crossfire on the A-bomb site, uh, and Pip takes out three of unwanted players, and Pith takes him out, and we'll get the bomb plant on uh, for apps, so it's still to play for. Nico with three HP here, still hasn't picked up a rifle from one of his uh, cadaverous teammates. Witten going to go down, Pipe goes for the stand, and he's going to go down as well, but they got the bomb planted, That is and two frags. The boot, so that's a larger, a yeah. rather large result. Two plants, two plants in two rounds is great. It certainly is. They're gonna have a lot of money going into this, and they've really dealt some you know, significant blows here by just forcing the rebuys of those weapons, or you know, rather the drops, I suppose, of the the Thanases and their teammates to buy. So that's gonna be quite nice. And Copenhagen walls. It's gonna be interesting to see what kinds of setups they are are going to be playing here. You know, I really love the way that Dignitas, you know, another Danish side plays this map because I love seeing the aggressive banana play and not being afraid to push apps <laughs> Better as well. call Saul has left the game. <laughs> so um, they've left Nico at $4,600 so he can get the AWP later on in the match and someone else has dropped him an M4. So they have got uh, almost a full buy SMF with a FAMAS. They are going to be peeking around in mid, but um, they want to be careful because Makalele has got the uh, head ripper and he will be looking for some heads. And this is the standard play we're seeing. The standard inferno round from the terrace, the standard opener. They get as much map control as they can, trying to push the CTs away from a banana, trying to push the CTs away from apartments. It's a bonus if they can kind of clear out this this area here and force you know, Nico back here or back here so that the CTs really don't know what's going on. And we can see the bomb is all the way on the slope. Like, at the bottom of the slope even. It, maybe in that haystack somewhere. They have to go you know, sifting around for that. Yeah, and the, tees, uh, the tees are looking for information here. You could see Pith was uh, boosting Makalele on, on Banana so they could look into the... And look at that. They, they forced him to the furthest back line. And now, Copenhagen Walls, they have no idea what's happening. Yeah, so that, that mound of wood you can see on the left, that if you, if you boot a teammate on there, they can see into the back of the bomb site. And you can get some very valuable picks um, there. 
and the, the job there of Quitten and his teammate was to try to keep Copenhagen Walls now at the back here because they really still don't know. And look at this, how close they are. They've done the job effectively. They've made it into a five on two there onto the site. But Cage and B holding it down right there at the back of that site. Well played. They've got to get the bomb down. The bomb takes just over three seconds to plant. Uh, something to bear in mind when you are in narrow time situations. But uh, they do get the bomb plant down and... Uh, Rather than going for the kind of heat and potty setup, they've got two guys in the dark and one guy in uh, second oranges here. So we'll see how this pays off. Doesn't seem to be looking out too well for them, but uh, there was a strong position there on the corner. Does Nico have enough time? He does. He's got a kit. Sleeping with the fishes. Can he find an AWP? So oh, he was just too far barely, away, barely. running with the rifle, reloading it. If he had his knife out, he might have been a bit closer. Possibly could have picked it up with E. But uh, that's going to be 47.50 out of the bank to uh, bring out his own AWP. And let's see if he uh, chooses to pick mid. Peak mid? We'll see if he picks mid with a peak. And here we go. We're going to see Nico making his way over. There goes the flash into second mid as he peeks out. And his teammate goes to the second mid peak. And... Unwanted, unwanted Whitten able to take down Pimp on that peak. So that aggressive play uh, not quite going the way that Copenhagen Wolves wanted. And so early in the round, Copenhagen Wolves, uh, they're going to probably be under a lot of slow pressure here from Unwanted. They're going to feel it kind of creeping around, a bit like Alien. You know it's there. You know it's it's uh, trying to get you, but it, you never quite see it. And uh, actually, PB going to take down Nico on the angle. And this is looking... Very bad right oh, now. Oh, no Nagels. one likes to get caught with the flashbang in their hand. Great repeat there from SMF though. Or peek onto the angle, gonna pick up that old frag onto Whit and really evening things up. SMF, he know he knew he needed to come out with some frags there after losing two teammates very early on. Had to go for the risk to try to even things up before the play got going from Unwanted. Ver that's a sign of a very aware player. And we're gonna see Unwanted pushing up now through onto Arch. And perhaps through CT spawn as well. And in they go. And it's 30 seconds left in the round now. It's, it's starting to get a bit too close for comfort. SMF there in pit. We have Carrigan there in library. And Cajun B. Cajun B right now could win the round here for Copenhagen Walls. He can hold this down. He's going to get one frag. He gets Pyth down to seven points of health. The bomb picked up. Pyth though, no time and no health. He is going to... Go down, and that's going to be Copenhagen Walls with another round. Unwanted, running around looking for the picks there. You saw there were three of them pushing Arch together. None of them flashed in. They just both, they basically double peaked at the same time. They want to get the kills rather than force the T's to retreat. Um, but again, yeah, they moved, they went round through CT. Unfortunately, the bomb got picked, and there were 15 seconds left, so it was going to be very hard for them to win round after that. Um, Know, even if they p picked a, a frag from CT, ran onto the bomb site, found somewhere safe to plant, and then planted it, you know, it would have been uh, something quite impressive for that to happen. But uh, yeah, and the odds of it happening were quite low. Let's just put it that way and move on to the next round. We've got four pea shooters for the terrorist side here, and they are four zero down. So this is going to be some good economy building for the uh, CT side. Oh yeah, and again, I have to throw the credit to SMF who in the previous round. They were in a, a situation with three on five, and uh, he could have just waited. He could have just sat back, chilled, and been, you know, just, oh, you know, I'm on my defensive angle and stuff like that. Seven but HP for Nico. Even that range with that CZ. It is, it is scary. They're hunting him down. They're going to try to get the AWP. If they can get the AWP down and throw the AWP away over the fence, that's a huge result. It's a lot of money gone, and Quitten actually going for the defense there. Close range. In goes Carrigan into the library, spraying for dear life does get Hwiden down and finishes it off with PB. So uh, damaging round there, but not, it could have been a bit worse. But yeah, they're, uh, still, they're still low on money, the CTs. They lost two more players in that round, so they're going to have to um, buy up again, looking at about $5,000 for those two buyers if they're going for full buyers. So you see SMF with $100. So again, if, uh, if the CTs lose one round, they're not in good financial stead just yet. And here we go. We're probably going to see. Oh, look, there goes actually the. Uh, they've got the three man banana the push yeah, from the exactly. CTs here. So they've smoked it off from CT spawn, which is really nice. And uh, the T's didn't manage to make it through the smoke in time to um, put up a contest. And that's pretty much half the map gone down the drain for them, at least for the first half of yep. this round. It depends how 
Copenhagen Wolves decide to play this now? Do they put two guys there? They're actually keeping three. They're keeping two towards car. So usually you would expect to leave one guy down there and then the other two instantly rotate back or... Because even if that guy dies, he's going to have a, a good chance to fall back usually if he hears something or he can get a shot and keep falling back, falling back, falling back. And um, that gives the, the players on the other side of the map, even if they're four, loads of time to get in position in time to really deal with a, a B take. So uh, they actually are playing the 3-2 setup here, the standard. And in go unwanted, up into mid, using the nades to cover themselves. In cage and B, you're going to rotate through Banana. And he might catch this uh, this double back here from unwanted. And he that's to get it. out of there ASAP. This is going to get really awkward for unwanted now. They have to go and commit. They're being chased. He's being chased up Banana by three uh, unwanted players. They're going to take advantage of the fact that they've burned some grenades on the B-bomb site, so they can't stop them from pushing the site right now. And here they go into this crossbar, coils and first boxes there, and they get annihilated. PB remaining. That is an excellent hold from yeah. the CTs there, and it shows the value of getting the head out of there, staying alive, and uh, bringing out a crossfire. And also because Cajun B, he knew that uh, Banana is relatively safe, so he actually pushed around there. Had Cajun B not actually got the flash in there and, and the quick the quick angle um, onto the players who kind of you know, rotating all the way back for a, a B push, then one, his team wouldn't have known exactly what's happening, and two, he wouldn't be able to slow them down. And so that was just really well played. It reminded me of SMF there. Like, the player knows what he has to do to really save the round, to get the information, or to get the frags, to give them a better chance in the round, and he just did it. So just really high-level stuff here from these guys, and we're seeing Unwanted with an apartment's take straight up. Nice rush there. But uh, can they get towards the site? Like sometimes you see people smoke the truck so their teammates can jump out of hats um, with a bit more cover than usual. But these guys are just going hell for leather and it is not working at all. There is one person left. The CTs, they're, they're bloodthirsty. They're shooting each other. And Michael Ele. He left. Not able to do much. Carrigan going to take him out. 7 to 0 is a very, very hard scoreline to deal with for Unwanted. But at least for them, they are getting. The thirty-four hundred dollars hmm. from the uh, the maxed out consecutive round loss bonus hit. They they, I mean, it, it looks like they're running out of ideas at the moment because I mean they, they just basically just try to bum rush um, the A bomb site from where from where the CTs unless they've pushed decided to be aggressive on that round they can set up a crossfire from um, the site and the pits, and if you don't kill the pit guys, then it's going to be really hard to get anywhere near a bomb plant. So it is an eco round here for Unwanted, and it looks like they're going to be pushing towards a... The Molotovs come down versus Pro Style on the arch, and this is going to be a slaughter. They get one, it's, it's you know, it's uh, minimal economic damage to the CTs. 8-0, this is looking fantastic for Copenhagen Wolves, and now the money is really building up. We've got 10,000 on two players, 9,000, 6,000. This is, uh, it's going to be a long time before they eco if Unwanted starts to pull some rounds back here. This is when, this is the spot when Copenhagen Wolves feel the confidence. They feel like they can take the risks with the confidence, but they have to be well calculated. They have to have team play. They can't just go, I feel like I'm making frags. I feel like I'm unstoppable, because that's when things start to turn around. And Unwanted going up and on ahead, price to get the trade. Two pl In fact, two players actually taken out for, for no losses here for Unwanted. And that banana control is well and truly theirs very early into the round. They have a lot to play with right now. We're going to see they are working two people down boiler. Perhaps they can take control of the, the first stage of mid as well. And that's going to leave Copenhagen Walls completely blind. Out they go onto the A bomb site. Quitten taking the, the pre fire spots there towards Pit. And in goes PB as well. The bomb is on A. Here is Pimp. And there he goes, the Nico and Cajun B left here for Copenhagen Wolves and unwanted finally in an, what should be an unlosable round. So well played to them. And we're going to see Nico and Cajun B who should, who might as well go for it or at least get some exit kills here. I mean, they have a lot of money. Yeah, I mean, one, one thought is kind of, do you give them the AWP? But they've got one already, so it's not a big deal. Two AWPs is not ideal on the T side. Whoa. Of of a map because uh, 
Oh. Is it is it just him or is it the Go TV? I think the Go TV is going crazy. PowerPoint TV should be back in us by the beginning of the next round, hopefully. But uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't matter if they lose the AWP in this round because two AWPs on T side of Inferno is not really the best of ideas. You don't. You, to be honest, even you can make a, an argument against even the value of one AWP on T because because CTs they can always they always have to force you to. To basically get, you have to get like a, a teammate to flash you out or onto the angle. It's always very awkward with orbs. And where can you really use it as T? If you use it on mid, when when you have um, when you have a situation where let's say let's say you're playing against Virtus Pro, right? Virtus Pro have amazing setups and they base a lot of their CT play out of like not taking aim jewels. We're just going to reconnect, by yeah. the way, to the Go TV and hope it just clears a little bit of lag we're having. So we'll be back into the match shortly. And uh, yeah, so so Virtus Pro they don't do a lot of angels. So if you have a, an AWP against a team like that, That's you're going to be AWPing down middle. There's no one going to beat you. That mm. means that removes value from that AWP because that's that's an advantage of having it. So uh, it'd be better having an AK so you can push close range against their AWP. I mean, and it's the same with Banana. Like if they don't want to peek you on Banana, or if they want to use grenades, well, your AWP is, ha has little value. So it's it's a team. So there are players and teams that would definitely argue against an AWP having much value. Here, but uh, I think it depends on the style of the opera as well. Because yeah. against, if you're against uh, CTs who don't have AKs, then you, if you're fast enough, you, and they're holding an angle, you can take them out. But it, it, I think it does, it does come down to the style. Yeah, I think you need very, well. very good support from the team. If you, if you can Absolutely. do that, you can make it, make it very effective. Because once it does get into position for a site defense, it, it can be very, very painful. Like if you have. Your opera in on B, it's very tough. And Pyth gonna just pop flash himself through the smoke. He's gonna get a double only with one. But that is actually a big result there. And unwanted, they're being quite slow on mid here. They're gonna tr they're trying to sell the fake a little bit there on, on B, but Macaulay flashed himself a little bit too much there. Had to take a moment. So can they get this pick in the pit? The guy staying alive in the pit is just causes so much problems for the team side. But it's interesting that they haven't gone for the B push after after getting the pick there. I think they're expecting the rotate. He's not going to find the last CT, Cajun B. I think they're expecting the rotate um, and they're trying to kind of punish it, but it's not happening from Copenhagen Wolves. And uh, yep. they're fairly, fairly confident. And again, it's 9-1, so yep. this could hardly be better for the CT side. And I wanted, and really need to, I don't know, I, d I don't think we've seen a dedicated push on the B-bomb site. I mean, yes, the CTs are getting smokes down, but uh, as long as you hold a reasonable amount of um, territory on the map, i.e. hold somebody mid and make sure you're not getting flanked from apps, which uh, would be a surprise from the CTs at this point. It's, uh, you know, just wait for the smoke to go and then, and then, and then make a play for the B-bomb site. They've made a, a full buy rush onto the A-bomb site, but um, I don't know if they've been giving the B-bomb site enough attention. It's been 10 rounds, now they've only got one, so something has to change. And they are just taking them out control as usual. And you add that, that uh, hit play. Oh, the peak there from Maxaki getting tagged a little bit. And Quitten trying to see if he can find himself a one-on-one -on -one as well. And they are really trying to push their luck here over towards B trying to really force the CTs to play defensively there. And it's, it's working by and large here. Well, it looks like a Copenhagen Wolves have the same idea that I have. Like, what well, you know, it may, it's about time they push B. And they had sent a third person over to the B bomb site, but he is rotating back towards Arch now. And uh, you can see they put two people on the pit while he rotated over there. So uh, they had a, a stronger site defense. But um, Oh, here come the nades. It is going to be a B. We can... D with a poss possible flank through CT. Um, there's one guy just hanging around, loitering. Let's see how this goes. Bit of spray there from first oranges. And uh, Nika gets a frag, which makes things uncertain until they see the bomb here. Pith with two kills on a B bomb site. Can they get the bomb down now? Nico with the AWP. He is smoked off for the time being. Oh, he's legged him, has he? He has legged him. with 60 HP. These smokes and flames are going to slow down the CTs. Nico just yellowing straight through the flames. There's a 4v3 retake here. Three for the CTs. And they've got a naughty boost up in the... Uh Great Molotov though, but... They've got, they're, run they're out of time already. Yeah, there's no time left at all. And at this point, it's just uh, to lose the orb. But they might as well go for it. They've yeah. got so much money in the at bank. At this point, they just want to keep them on site. Those are two great kills from Pimp there, but um, at that point they knew they couldn't win the round, but they could at least keep all the T's on on site, make them all die. Look at their money now. The T's, you know. So one of those rounds where Unwanted did like a really 
fast push, and you, you mentioned how powerful it was to have SMF and Pip. Um, and Pimp got a load of frags from, from the inside the A-bomb site. Usually Pimp's position there is really, really terrible if this gets completely cut off because he has they can all just pile into him and he has no one distracting him. He needs that pressure coming from Pit to really do his job. So it feels like if Unwanted keep making these A-plays, they should, with just a little tighter execution, get the luck here. And it actually looks like they're going for a hardcore A push straight through Arch, straight in from Small Pit into that bomb site. SMF though cutting them down as they stand in that smoke. Mike Lely as well going for the frag after frag after frag. And it is just Cajun B and Pimp left. Pimp in Pit will go down. Cajun B creeping around the corner. One and one on two gets the one and one. Zaki does fall. And there's plenty of time here against Michael Lelip. Playing bomb boxes there on the site. He goes for this, the peak and he does manage to take the frag. Nine to three and unwanted taking themselves that A play. I don't think Cajun B was aware of how many plays were left there because he had a quick retreat after an, an engage on the bomb site and looked towards the pit, but there was only one person left for unwanted. Um, Unfortunately, the AK did prevail on that occasion. It is 9-3, however, to Copenhagen Wolves, so they are by no means on shaky ground here. And uh, they are, however, on an eco. Finally, you know, 12, well, 13 rounds in, they, uh, the T's managed to make force an eco after only winning three and rounds. There they go. Quick bit of contact from that eco, that apartment's push. And that's kind of nice, actually, because now I'm wanted to kind of scared to go in apartments because they don't want to risk it by with the jumping AK. And he's actually going to find himself a kill onto Carrigan. And just picking away as, as best they can. Yeah, but the CZs are so more favorable to the CTs on this map. Because all they have to do is hold and try and kind of avoid getting naded, really. And uh, damage can be done. So. He's spread out at the moment. Nico could get one or maybe two frags here if he's lucky. Gets a few tags. He's just he's just trying to prize the T's open slowly but surely. And here's a three v five here. Two of the CTs on low health, but they do have the CZ, and anything can happen. I mean, I'm not expecting him to win the round here, but again, economical damage. We see in a Galil buy here from PB. So uh, only two rounds left remaining following this round. So. We'll see how much it matters. The bomb is down, so uh, regardless of what happens here, I do expect uh, a full buy from the T's in the next round. Yep, and Unwanted have to feel good that they're getting some momentum back here because they needed it desperately to have a chance in this match. They were close to getting completely shut out, but they're really giving themselves a fighting chance now. And yeah, 9-6 uh, is possible now. And there were a lot of close rounds for them too. There were a lot of rounds which they were just, you know, it was a hair's breadth of, of not winning. They were so close. And you know maybe some of the smoke placements be a bit better, and uh, and that would have made the difference. And unwanted, going to go nine to four right now. So moving forwards, I I'm not sure how they expect to play this now, but they've had a lot of success on their their A rounds, and their, their take of apartments and stuff has been quite successful. They found picks that way as well, and. They usually find success after taking control of Banana as well. So, you know, standard stuff has been yielding some results, but but uh, can they pull it off here when we have quite the buy for Copenhagen Walls? How, how much pressure do you think these fields are, these teams are feeling? Because bearing in mind, this is best of one, and this tournament is to qualify for a, for a league which ends in $50,000 finals. $50,000. This is for a league as well. I mean, this is, this is not something that happens every day. Exactly, and in, in a league format, you're safe. You know, you get a lot of time to prepare, and you get a lot of time to really focus yeah. on it. And once you're in, you're in. Yeah. And, you, you know, it's, they can really play their games. But Whitten, what a peak shot onto SMF. Catching that heady through the, the little wooden frame on that door. And is again... It, is it falling apart here for Copenhagen Wolves? They c well, unwanted after getting that pick can let them stew a little bit. You know, and just force themselves to rotate around the map, of course very hard to hold here and you can see Carrigan's holding in this kind of middle position and the A the pit and the A bomb site play on A is gonna be quite difficult to successfully defend anything. So it's really unwanted round to win here if they make the call together. But they're gonna go for the B split it looks like and oh P B They've the read it look entry. instant rotate instant rotate. There's only one person there, thirty seconds left on the clock. Big they tell. know what's happening. Did the T's go for the save here? I mean like the they still, they're just they starting to, to enroach the bomb site now, so we'll see how the engage goes. Pith can't see anything, and he's on 20 HP. 
Oh, his life's been stolen from him. But uh, 10 seconds left. I, I don't see a bomb plot happening now. Matalele, only one left, and that, you know, is just too little too late. They just, it's not enough time to clear the site, clear CT, to get the bomb down. Yeah, that was one of those situations where, like, it's a very big tell that uh, I think it was PB who got caught trying to go arch by himself. Massive tell, considering how much control of apartments Copenhagen Wolves had at that point, uh, just prior to that. They, they just put the pieces together. They knew, as you said, they made the wreath and unwanted. Got to be a bit quicker than that. Waiting. Ooh, Cajun, 41 HP. That nade literally landed on his head like he had a basket in there. Oh, nice pop flash coming over for a free kill. And, oh, barely unable to get out of that position with his life. And there goes the trade. Very nice position here for Unwanted. Again, able to just let Copenhagen will sit and, and reposition themselves to effectively kind of cover for that man that's now missing on we've the map. Seen, we've seen this in previous rounds, though, where they've got a pick on the B bomb site and then they've pushed A and then they haven't won the round. Like, why don't... I don't know why... It's like they're just always expecting them to be two, two and two, but uh, Copenhagen Wolves have not rotated. Well, here comes the slow rotate now, actually, through CT spawn, but uh, no, he's going back towards the arch. Have they spotted the tease there? They seem uncertain as to what they mean to do there. There's this meth great little Molotov there actually in front of the truck. That's going to prevent them from charging in on top of him on that position. SMF holding, delaying, and it's going to be long enough to get Carrigan from B all the way over. He's pretty much there. Nico's got to hold on for Carrigan. Nico holding it down behind the box. It is just on. Carrigan now, he sprays down PB in the one one A spray battle through the smoke that Whitten's going to take down 10-5. to five. And that is a very, very needed round for Unwanted right there at the end. Ten to five. They they were looking. What was it? Eight to zero before they. Yeah, I mean they they the they, they were they were getting their faces eaten off by head crabs, you know, <laughs> in the in the first half of that half. And to 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 bring to get five rounds, to get five rounds out of those fifteen rounds, I think is uh, no mean feat. I mean, when they got the CTs to Eco, they could have nine six was p suddenly you know potential. Well, like when it was seven nil. I'd be surprised if they got two rounds the way things were going, yeah. and all of a sudden they've they've pulled five rounds out of the hat. So, you know, it's, it is, it's going to be um, a long arduous task for them to win this match, but it's still definitely doable. Oh yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's going to be now they get to play CT, and honestly, that was the hardest side for them to play against a, a team that like Copenhagen Wolves. They yeah. have a lot of practice together, and they know how to play in team play, how to read the the map as a team, and and they have good awareness and so on. So it's always going to be harder to be a tease in that situation, playing against Copenhagen Wolves. So now I'm wanted to get to actually test their metal against the offense of uh, the Wolves. So it's going to be interesting to see actually how strong unwanted CT players. So it should be easier for them. It should be, because Inferno is about a lot of well-coordinated set plays, you know, proper smoking and flashing and stuff like that, so to really make the T side, you know, actually happen for you. Yeah. Um, so I... I could, I actually could see a very close game now if, if uh, only unwanted are able to get the pistol round down. Absolutely. That's, well, that's kind of ten, key. ten, f yeah, ten five. If they, if they lose the pistol, then yeah, you're looking at thirteen five unless, unless CZ. That's so kind of key. You know, and that's that's still doable on Inferno. It's it's a it's a CT favored map, but I think, I think we will see stronger set plays on the T side. From Copenhagen yes, Wolves yeah, yeah, than true. we saw uh, on that half, which is which is definitely a factor as well. So 10-5 is a lot more of a death knell in this situation than it might be for other teams. Yeah, it's it's really interesting as well because I don't know if Unwanted are going to be confident to go for some of the aggressive play styles on the CT side, mm. having not had a huge amount of experience together. Because that's something where you need to you actually need to drill that, like you actually need to understand um, because because it's something that you do really well if you, if if you can do it dynamically based on people's spawns then you can make it really strong because you yeah. can always get the best timings. And that's so important, especially when it comes to the banana aggressions. And there's a lot of like, you know, pixel perfect smokes and stuff that you, you need to be able to throw. And, and like the, the specific knowledge of how to team, you know, team flash your guys into certain positions. Mm. It requires a lot of team play. So I w I w I'm going to expect something that's much more standard from them, having not a huge amount of experience playing together. Unpredictability, however, can play in your favor purely yeah. because it's unpredictable. However, it, that can only work for a certain amount of time. The longer you play that style, kind of, you know, extending yourself further than you may, etc., the more susceptible you are to that style being being broken by the uh, kind of more solid, more tried and tested team. So we'll see. Um, I, I mean, I'm quite interested to see, you know, Copenhagen Wolves know that they have an advantage in this pistol round. So I'm quite curious to see what kind of tactics they choose to employ 
in this round? Are they going to go for a fast strat here or slow picks? We're about to find out. Yeah, it, it's it's going to be very interesting here. It's also going to be interesting how Unwanted actually handled the, the start of the round. Look at Makalele is actually waiting feeling, for feeling a nade, perhaps. Feeling a bit emo here, just wants to uh, checking out his put plants. his head in the plants. Okay, no special nades. He was just having him. a moment, bro. Sometimes you just got to put your head in the plant, man. And there's a, there's a decoy in, in mid and second mid, so it would be suggestive. I mean, they can always double back through onto a quick mid push, but it's going to be a quick move on to wait. Here goes Pimp, the, the point man here, into the bomb site. Mazaki with the deny there. And he's got to keep this position. He's got to get one more frag at least. He's not going to be able to get oh, it. Flying Glocks. One health on Nico. This is going to be a difficult retake. But they're all together, brothers in arms, as they charge Storm Construction here together. And the site. In they go. And oh, there you go. Get the trades. Two on one now. It's just Carrigan left standing in that smoke. Where is Carrigan? The bomb ticking away there. Oh, great movement from Carrigan. He can't go around to construction. Oh, he's got shenanigans. Here. Yeah, this is... So close. Benny Hill music. And they both come off to gun him down, and it is actually going to be unwanted to win the pistol. And that was actually kind of close because that was actually a four versus three retake for unwanted, where they, I, where they I were think, the ones with three. I think CPH wars were quite unfortunate in that round. And, and again, we can see um, the tactics from the more solid, tried and tested uh, terrorist team. Because if you look at the on after plant situation, the way Cajun B was hiding. Um, behind the wall while his teammate was baiting in the garden area next to ruins. Yep. Yep. You know, that that was the kind of play that may have been missing from the unwanted side. And that's, but you know, it was gr great st strategy, but uh, it went to unwanted favor anyway. And um, you know, hopefully they can bring themselves back into this game and we can... Uh Quinton has the uh, the Howl M4 and he, he named it Copyright Infringer. <laughs> <laughs> nice, stuff. that's genius. That is awesome. Um, but here we go, seeing... Copenhagen Wolves slowly make their move up towards B. They're trying to, you know, hazard at a, at a rotate there. But uh, unwanted, they're just, they're holding. They're holding steady. They know that Copenhagen Wolves are going to try to play some tricks with them and they're not going to fall for any nasty tricks. And back up they go, up Banana. Slowly but surely, but there goes the smoke. So well timed. And then they go back down again. So they are just trying to play it safe. And uh, of course, you know, getting the bomb down, they wanted to go for this surprise buy here. And... Uh, putting in a Galil and an AK. It's, uh, Carrigan's definitely. got the uh, Desert Eagle Crimson Web, now known as Spider Juan. Shoutouts to Reddit. Michael Ely with the mag. Looking for contact here. Boom! There's a contact. Gets a trade kill, SMF, but uh, falls <laughs> oh. to the flames. MP7 holding it down. Gets the frag. Bomb goes down as well. Galil and, and AK still in play though. Just the, the AK occasion be left over now. MP7 too good. That's a nice trade up, MP7 to AK. I'll take that, thank you very much. That trade up contract. No plant either. So uh, this is looking good so far for Unwanted. Yeah, it is 7 to 10 at the moment. And of course, we can't forget that Copenhagen Wolves did, did go for that, you know, forced by last round. Just getting the AK and Galil into the mix and some deagles and stuff. So they're not on the strongest economy in the world, but uh, they, they'll be able to buy next round. Who's on the strongest economy in the world? Oil country, maybe? What? Oil country? Strongest economy in the world? I'm wondering now. I'm going to find out and get back to you. I don't have the stats, James. I'll get back to you on that. You get back to me all on right, that. Right. Here we go, back into the game, and it is unwanted. Just decimating Copenhagen Wars, just running into the lines here and they're taking it that ranges as they should be and they're gonna take an easy round there and, and it's a clean one it's a completely clean round for them they're really building up the bank and of course that's gonna lend them a lot of security a lot of um, comfort going into future rounds it's gonna also allow them to to feel like they can take some risks here but if they really want to try and take a risk they're gonna have the economy to to back that up so that if it does go wrong they don't have to actually eco next round and that's that was really good Good positioning there for himself behind the pillar against the Ron Jeremy CZ spray down to uh, give himself, you know, some some additional defense and uh, managed to get the pick. And that was a clean round from Unwanted. And they find themselves 10-8 up. Quitten has the jump on him. Uh, Nico, sorry, if you can only see him, and he does. Early pick, very, very favorable for the CTs. Yeah, well done there. We see a trade one. A piece. PB has left the building. 
And with the minutes still to play, there's obviously a lot that unwanted... Sorry, that Copenhagen Walls can actually pull off here. See them right here on the map, actually just still trying to have... You know, maintain presence all over the map. Worth noting that Unwanted have basically uh, done what they always expected the CTs to do when they had the p someone's got picked on B and they've instantly sent somebody nice over from up. the A bomb site and uh, put two people in pit. Yeah, so uh, this is what they were expecting the other team to do and this is what, they're, what they're doing themselves, which is quite interesting. And we do find three of the Copenhagen Wolves team on uh, B possibly looking to push the site, expecting the CTs to have exhausted their smoke grenades now. And this is a very, very big responsibility responsibility here for Mazaki, who has to make sure that he gets a couple frags. And he does have a teammate very close, in Michael Ailey, who's going to get flanked right now. And he's going to go down to Kerrigan. Seconds. Mazaki still with a very, very big job to do. And he doesn't quite have enough to deal with it. And now Python Whitten charging across the map. They can make this happen, actually. They've planted the bomb on barbecue, and Pimp has the Molotov. So we may see a barbecue if the CTs go for a defuse here. Over goes the flash as Whitten gets in uh, position to help Pyth. You've got a bait again. Look at the bait. Same bait as a pistol round from the tease. Pyth going to find it. Picks it for the second. Not quite fast enough. Whitten making his way through onto the bomb site straight up. Got a player in construction and one in the back of the site. Can he deal with it? And he's not going to be able to find the shots that he needs. And Pimp is going to take him down. That is another round there. Going to Copenhagen Wolves finally picking one up. Unwanted, still able to uh, get all the primary rifles out. Twitten probably pondering an orc, but goes for the M4 here. So um, still very much in this now. I like the I like that they're not going for the orcs right now. I mean, they they have been in positions where they could have done, but uh, obviously it's it's an expensive choice, and they're choosing to play you know, some tight team play together. And so far, it's been it's been doing it's, it's been working out for them. And trying to kind of get into good positions in apartments as usual to catch off Copenhagen Walls as they try to take control of it, which is always going to be an objective of the terrorist side to try to take some amount of control of the apartments. As you can do it with, uh, with proper flashing and you know team team play, you can make that happen. It's difficult for the CTs to deal with. But uh, we see SMF uh, in here as the point man trying to find an angle, trying to force out those grenades, and he does get himself smoked off, which is actually to the benefit of Copenhagen Walls right now, as they're still all over the map, and they can still have B as an option if they want to rush it later, because now there's no smokes there. Yeah, he's the only person on the at the moment absolutely just trying to bait the uh, CTs into exhausting their grenades so they can have an easier push, should they choose one later on in the round. That's a good so setup here from Pyth Whitten here. No, no deaths yet for either team, and it looks like we're going to see some pressure towards quad. We'll see if uh, Pith and his teammate can hold. Dropping into the pit there. Whitten there as well, behind the smoke. This is not looking so good for them all of a sudden. They're just caught behind the smoke. There's nothing they can do. Th and the teammates just going down left and right. PB and Mazaki coming in from the B side of the map. Like, what the hell just happened? A is just completely lost at this point. Four players left for the walls. As PB and Mazaki try to find their way in. But it's going to be quite difficult. They've got a little bit of time on the clock. They need to find a pick quick. Otherwise, they may have to uh, go for the eco. Yeah, it may be that they're just trying to keep the T's on site, so as many of them die as possible here. But, uh, setting up for exit kills now are unwanted. Might just find one here onto SMF. Zaki barely <laughs> missing the shot there, as his teammate does go down. And three members of Copenhagen Wars do actually survive there. And uh, you know you're right. They are definitely trying to keep the economy down. Had had all of the members of Copenhagen Walls died there, we would see a very shaky economy from them. And if unwanted, it, it would actually actually unwanted can buy here. They can do actually do a full buy here. They're actually going to go for it as well. And uh, they're, double they're mag seven. And oh, I love me some mag seven. And again, this the reason for this buy is is again because they know that they can break the economy of Copenhagen Walls if they win this. They get uh, a lot of echoing from Copenhagen Walls, so they're in a better hmm. situation. I think. Let's see. Let's look at the money on Copenhagen Walls. Yeah, I think they'll be able to maybe get together some kind of ropey buy if they lose this roundabout plot. Yeah, definitely. We'll see. And but uh, SMF find himself with only 17 health points remaining. Well, Whitten actually pushing all the way through apps now, and they probably don't see this. Oh, let's look at Whitten. I want to see some Mag 7 action. That's all there he is, trying to get up close and personal with the Mag. That's a really nice position if you can uh, get a teammate who's at top mid to try and peak second mid from Boiler. Um, 
sorry, from balcony. And it gives them, look, at, look, they've got four people going towards A now, and we've got a train of terror, un terrorists coming in. They have no idea what's about to face them. Good shot there from Michael Ailey, taking down one. SMF to drop him before he can get anything else done, though. And Mazaki going to go down in the site. Pyth able to make the trades happen, though. And uh, with a double with that CZ, picks up the AWP. He has to switch around. And it looks like Carrigan cannot get through the smoke there. But the bomb is down, 25 seconds left. Carrigan looking to find a way in. But those smokes, very well played. They're going to delay a lot. Has to take the long way around for that bomb pickup. Easy to do the re-peak upon re-peak situation. This is almost impossible for Carrigan. He finally will get taken out by Pi CZ, who I think claimed three lives with that, that CZ of his. So, wow, unwanted, picking another one up. And again, that was a situation where they... They made the buy to try to break the economy of Copenhagen Walls. We can see it is it is definitely on the ropes at the moment. They could and they're buy. Going they're going for the save. Yeah, they could buy here, but I think they're they, they're using their round advantage and they're gonna. Yeah, I think it's better that they don't buy as well. I mean, they they are gonna want a lot of nades because without a lot of nades, you can't really do a huge amount as a tease. It's like hard to get on positions. I feel like, especially if I yeah. wanted want to yeah, play it's particularly it's defensive. It's, it's a long term de decision they're making yeah. here. Well, occasion B with two HP. That rhymes, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're a poet and you didn't even know it. Oh, man. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we have SMF doing the usual here. He's, he's usually the, the man who's trying to distract, keep presence on, on B to keep unwanted players in that area. Mike Lele, though, he is going to connect the shot over at Boiler. And, you know, K uh, Carrigan was trying to peek in, trying to get him to miss, but it's just not having it. And Whitten, he's not going to miss either. And they're trying to find a way in on this uh, pistol. All they want around, is a bomb can't. plant right now. Oh yeah, but um, even a couple of frags will to steal to steal this orb and to throw it over the fence would be a big play. But oh, I'm not going to make it happen. That 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 is uh, that's often quite quite fancy. You don't you don't usually get to see it actually pulled off, but when it, when you do see it pulled off, the orb like tosses over somewhere that the CTs can never reach it. Yeah, it is awesome. So cool. And here we go. We now we get the proper buy. Nico actually orping up it. This is going to be interesting to see how he he does this. If he gets challenged, then that's going to be. Um, Makalele has gone uh, towards the B-bomb site, so yeah. uh, he's just going to YOLO up. Oh, oh, aggressive Nico. No fear at all. Makalele has connected with SMF and sent him to the bench for this round. Nico just uh, going hell for leather here. Oh, oh he's legged legs. him. That was a poorly timed, well, not poorly timed, but a fortunately timed jump there from uh, Maxaki, and he escapes with 16 HP. So Unwanted are really making a game of this right now. It's very, very hard for Copenhagen Wolves to save this round. They're going to do their best, though. They have the play lined up here for a bomb in apartments alone. And the other two on mids could come through quad. And Nico could catch the, the guys coming from connector, the rotators. Here he comes. Gets the shot to the torso of PB to drop him. And it's all of a sudden a three on two. Just consecutive one-on-ones being... being uh, one there for Copenhagen Walls, and now the bomb is down with a very advantageous position post-plant. What do the CTs do here? I mean, we've got one guy hanging around the library. Looks like they've chosen to save. Um, I mean, there was round. a bit. There was, seemed to be a bit of indecision there. Like uh, there was one guy in Banana who was just walking, and then a the library guy was approaching the site. But then they thought better of it and have. They're gonna. They're gonna live to fight another day. Look at the money, though. If if Copenhagen Walls had lost this round, unwanted, are pretty much tying up the game. So by, by winning this round, they're going to really force... Uh, they're going to create a situation where if they win the next round, which Unwanted will buy on, then then Unwanted have to eco. So they're already on like... It's, it's going to be like 15 to 10 at that point. So this round obviously could end the match here if Unwanted are unable to, to actually win this. Let's see what they do here. They do have one AK on Pith, uh, who's one of the strongest aimers without an AWP on their team. <coughs> but he's playing in the pit position, so uh, if they do go for uh, mid to late push. Mazaki, is he going to get them to line up here? Just barely spotting them and probably calling. Guys, there's there's, there's a couple dudes up B. No, <laughs> need to, uh, <laughs> no need to panic just yet, but it's getting hot in here. And it looks like Copenhagen Walls are going to slow their approach, which I think is a smart smart choice. Yeah, I mean, they, they've been spotted and... They, you could you could kind of kind of go for a bum rush, but they've got to expect all the nades, and uh, there's a high chance of being flashed, with flashes coming into pool, etc. As well, so better to just uh, they've got time to play with basically, and um, 
You know, they've still got options. They can still go to the A-bomb site. No one's been killed on either team yet. Yeah, and uh, as we actually see uh, Michael Ailey here, oh, he's got the smoke. Is there any smoke he's, left? He's on the B? only smoke that they have left. Okay. He's just smoked mid, so uh, the B bomb site looks like it's going to be under heavy fire very shortly. You can see them like lining up here up banana. It is coming. Mazaki's going to be the first point of contact there for his team to try to deal with this. And of course, PB is trying to rush up there to try and help him. He's pretty much alone. He has to make at least a couple frags here to make this retake possible. There goes number one. That's all he's going to find. And now we have to try to see if PB can do much here from construction. He's in a great position. And boom, he takes down Carrigan. Unwanted in a four on two right now. SMF trying to get that bomb down. But they just he just doesn't have the cover to do it. Going to attempt it again. Nico opening up an opportunity there. So on Nico gets another kill. Looking for the next shot. The tension is pretty high now as Nico has to look left. He has to look right. Trying to play the bomb. Whiffing the shot. Whiffing the second. And that's going to be the round there for Unwanted. Oh my god, so important there. <laughs> Both teams winning crucial, crucial rounds to keep themselves in it. Party time. I haven't heard those balloons for a while. No, not many defuses. Mm. You get it if, if you shoot a taser as well. Yeah, so the taser's in, in competitive yeah, now. You can, you can, uh, and it's $100. And it's $100, yeah. Uh, how do you feel I, about that? <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> I, I, I was, when I read it on whatever website I read it on, I was, I was hoping it was just for one day or something. But uh, no, it seems the, the, the derp gun is here to stay. So Look at this. They are kind of expecting a B uh, push here at the beginning of the round. Just Oh uh, yeah, just looking, looking for the eco pushes here. Yeah, ready to rotate. Got the early smoke down, trying to slow them down as much as possible. Ooh, Mizaki almost getting caught there. There goes Mozo, very well timed. This is looking pretty bad here for Kaminik Wars, but of course it is just their eco. Getting in any kinds of kills could be could be beneficial. They do get a couple kills though, and SMF and Cajun B left to try to get some more. Bomb goes down, cleaned up, and. We can see that it's uh, it well, ah, okay. It won't be. A, they have enough. They have by far enough money. So the economic damage there isn't going to really amount to very much. Thirteen to twelve now is unwanted. Are climbing their way back in this one. And uh, Michael Eddy with that AWP. Yeah, we see full AKs for Copenhagen Wolves. No AWP this time on the T side and uh, looking to be more versatile in uh, close quarters combat. Pyth with the apartment smoke right there. Means that he can get close if he wants to. Or he can just hold that position and count on Copenhagen Walls trying to go through the smoke, which is actually what's happening. And they jump into the arms. The welcoming embrace of Witten right there, waiting patiently for that. And Witten's not going to deny you. He's going to. Yeah, there, take there, you again, in. there is a distinct disadvantage to, be, to, to being the one emerging from the smoke. And you saw an example of it there. Oh, I love that angle there. Take a shot, fall down. It's about the information more than anything. And now Copenhagen Walls, we can see them darting back right now. Very quickly, very, very quickly, they realize that apartments is on lock. And Unwanted, are they going to try to push for some information right now? Because we can see the bomb getting dropped there. But Copenhagen Walls want to play this slow. They're keeping their options open right here. Pushing back up Banana to try to catch a rotator perhaps. And now taking the bomb back for a play on A. Raksaki's been doing a good job of uh, staying alive for extended periods of time and trying to uh, allow his teammates to better position themselves for the oncoming onslaught. But the bomb is looking to be on the B bomb site at the moment, and uh, Pith is on a long rotation. And that is a clean shot from Makaleli on Cajun B in the pool area. 13 13 here, Copenhagen Wolves. Are they going to buy? Are they going to eco? I mean, it's a tough decision now. I think they, I think they should eco it. Because um, then they can have a solid buy next round, and then they can they yeah can they, they force, have to win. force a buy afterwards. Because mm. yeah, I mean, well, if they if they get the economic damage in this round and lose the round, and win the following round, yeah, of then course they, they may they be in good stead to win. Yeah, the match. They, they can still yeah they can win yeah exactly. And so here we go. We're gonna see if they are able to do much with this eco. You never know with the CZ uh, ACZ in play. You just never know. And looks like Makalele coming out huge there with a triple. Makalele is ready for these eco rounds. Oh yeah, he's, he's eating them up. He's got a he's he's carrying a cannon, but he's ready to take them all.
And here we go. We've seen the buy round here for Copenhagen Walls. McAnally's got four eleven hundred dollars on him, so we're not going to see any more ecos in these remaining rounds. I don't think from the CTs. No, no. Unless unless they something goes terribly wrong and they just get just accidentally buy like buy some three times. Yeah, if they get slaughtered the next two rounds, then uh, they probably still have enough, have enough money to be honest because of bonuses. So it's all to play for. Thirteen, fourteen, unwanted. Oh wow, they actually get a pick on McZaki there and. Uh, PB was actually on site with him. So, so that's, that's a very sneaky Instant pick. rotation from Makaleli now. Yeah, he instant has to. Instant rotation. He pretty much has to. But I mean, Copenhagen Wolves never rotated when the pick was taken, on their, when they were on CT. I think they were just really afraid because because usually what they've been showing is Mazaki's alone on, on the B site. So, so from what they know, it could trigger a rush. But uh, obviously, they don't realize just that just yet. So unwanted at this point in time, looking... Like they really need a couple good individual performances here from PB and Michael Ele. Can they deliver? They are going to be going for that retake together. Oh boy, five versus two. This is not going to be easy. Greeted by the fire. It's really hard to see through those flames when you have an AWP. Yeah, they they might as well they might as well go for this. Though. I mean, I, I I mean I guess it doesn't matter too much. Whichever way you look at it, they prob they probably looking at this and being like, "Yeah, we this is impossible. This will 100% of the time we will lose this." Absolutely, round. yeah. So they're just gonna go for some some fun because they don't even need to save the weapons. I mean, maybe the AK is worth saving, but overall, it's. Uh, does McAnally hold the orb or does he throw or what? Ooh. <laughs> In the shins. Oh boy, that that uh, ragdoll was hilarious. Oh, nice hold there from McAnally. Lucky to get away with that because Pimp had a bit of a jump on him while he was. Switching weapons. 14, and here we go. 14. Are we going to see overtime here? Yeah, it's distinctly possible, isn't it? I mean, if, if we look at this, this situation here on the money. Um, Michael Lele is going to have to drop a lot if they lose this round. <laughs> look at that. He is greedy. And here we go. Is he going to peak mid? Or he or hasn't or? done this. I don't think he's done really done a, an aggressive peak on mid. Yeah, it's just, I wouldn't classify this as aggressive, but it's certainly a bit further out than... Than normal, uh, normal. So no quick pick on the B bomb site, which means no um, overextension from unwanted. We haven't really seen from Copenhagen Walls that situation where they all line up on second mid, you know, tossing the grenades over to hit the, the truck and, and the pit and so on and so forth. It's not been super common for them to do that. They try to like waste waste grenades of the the opposing team and then go up for you know solid pushes up banana or up up uh, mid and, and then throw the smokes whilst they're in transit and. Uh, so perhaps not going to be much luck to find any angles here, as Copenhagen Wall is really good at denying those so far. There's no info about the bomb site at the moment. Just um, defensive smokes all round, and uh, the CTs are already out of smokes. Well, I say already. There's just 35 seconds left on the clock. They do have three Molotovs. So uh, if the if the uh, T's try to rush B and don't get a fast pick, then they might still have difficulty getting the bomb down unless they put it in the smoke at the front of the site. Mazaki, he's got to get kills here. His mate went down for no frags at all. Waits in that position. So even though he's there, he's going to turn the corner. SMF, taking them out. And no frags from the players on B. Michael Lele and Pai are both going to have to put in an insane performance to make this happen against four. Two amazingly skilled players. But I don't know if this is even something you can ask them to do. SMF gonna just drop Michael Ailey there, all on pipe at this point. And he's gonna get dropped by SMF, who had a fantastic round there. And there we go. 15 14. And here we go. I suspect Michael Ailey. Drop, 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 drop. <laughs> so much money on Michael Ailey. But they all will have M4s. Okay, so <coughs> this is for all the marbles. Now the pressure really, really is on. Again, this is for an advancement in this qualifier to eventually oh, qualify goodness. for $50,000 league. Look at those nades. Look at the damage done to SMF there. That's, that is very nice. Good use of HEs there. If you think about it, somebody's like, well, if Unwanted uh, qualify for this tournament, there's a reasonable chance that they'll just get instantly picked up by a sponsor. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, because yeah. The, the exposure is guaranteed for like two months afterwards. Exactly. It so there's deal. so much on the line right now. They have to win this round. They have to. That's a good point, James. That's a very good Thank point. Thank you very much. Here we go. 
One minute left in the round now. Copenhagen Wolves have been consistently playing these rounds very slowly, trying to force mistakes from unwanted positionally and otherwise. You can see them moving back up, made Mizaki there. Very, very, very close angle. I think some people call this the fetish, fetish angle, if I'm not mistaken. Mizaki just getting pop flashed out. Great there. team flash there. Yeah, he's, he's probably feeling like he's in a bit of danger. Doesn't matter if people are there or not. I mean, the, the team play there was brilliant. And look at this, Copenhagen Wolves trying to sell the fake on A at the moment. And look at that, Mazaki's actually going to... Oh, they're, they're really selling this fake well. They're moving in to be with the bomb at the moment. And oh my goodness, this is going to be so difficult for them to deal with. And PB actually at the back of the side going to get taken down by the fire. But it is a two on four. SMF on one point of health. Here comes Mazaki. Here comes Michael Lele. This bomb going down, three on two. It's a brutal round here from the T. It's very well played. Michael Lilly going to get a free frag there on the bomb plant. It doesn't get taken down, but he goes down himself. And the counter terrorist win. Wow. Time out. Time. Boom. All right, so we have a short pause here as we go into overtime. So, James. I thought that was lost. I thought that was lost. The PB died on from flames on the bomb site there. Dude, they sold but that fake so well. And PB, he actually redeemed himself. Because remember the round where both PB and Mizaki, like the only reason they got to that situation was because there was a huge push, push on the uh, B and they weren't able to get any frags. They got zero frags there, and they got to they got to get like two or three. That's the that's their job. Yeah, that was and, uh, uh, that was uh, a surprise to be sure. But that um, was that was Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, round. it was it had their name written all over it. Yeah, yeah, it was very it was a very nice surprise. And we are going to be going into overtime shortly. I believe it's going to be MR5. Um, normally the face it pug system and uh, matchmaking system etc. is MR5. So uh, we should be going into that, which means we're going to be here for a little while. So. Um, <laughs> so we'll be looking forward to that shortly. I mean, what what do you do? You have any predictions for this for this overtime? For this overtime, it's it's really difficult. The thing is, like with Copenhagen Wolves, is that they love to just play it slow and steady. Mm. We can see them; they're just working constantly. And and the thing is about um, high level Counter Strike. This is really really difficult if you haven't played the game a lot and you don't have a lot of experience and you don't have a great caller. But it's all about picking up uh, picking up information. Like when you have these basic plays where you get map control. It's about you know moving into certain positions, trying to figure out where they're where they're actually throwing the nades from, or where you can hear them from. And if you can hear them in certain positions, that can trigger. Okay, we know that they're in these positions, so that so they can kind of like uh, extrapolate. Okay, then that means that this guy has to be there. So they have a weaker setup. So then they make their decision. I really feel like Copenhagen Wolves keeps doing decisions like that. They're like, okay, we've been moving around, moving around, and there, of course, they sold a really strong fake. Mm. So it's um, it's definitely something that they have a strength for, but unwanted to have such good individual skill that they just managed to pull it out. I do time. wonder what kind of adjustments we're going to see from from the CT size especially. Like, we saw we saw the different um, styles, mostly related to how unwanted we're playing. Like we've mentioned before, when they got a pick on B, they didn't push B, and Copenhagen Wolves didn't send somebody B. But uh, when Unwanted were on the CT side, they instantly sent someone to B, and then they lost the A bomb site. So yeah. I, d I wonder if we're going to see A, um, different reactions from the CTs, right, and B, yeah. different behavior from the Ts. Where they didn't push the B bomb site previously, are they going to push the B bomb site now? You know, it's all, it's, it's, uh, Everything could change now, basically. The, the problem is, right, for Unwanted is because they're not really a team, they're a bit of a mixed team. Like, it, they didn't show any aggressive play on Banana at all. And this kind of led Copenhagen Wolves into this kind of, they conditioned them and SMF always felt safe going up there alone. So they could easily catch them off there uh, with some aggressive plays. Be but I don't know if they'll be confident to do that because they have probably have never rehearsed that because they're a mixed team, mm. quite essentially. So it is very curious. They might just stick with what's been working, even though it's like a really close match. They might just say, okay, this has kind of been working for us. It's just, you know, put our heads down and get to it. Yeah. It's probably worth mentioning now that, um, you know, once this match is over, this is going to be uh, the last match for the, for the European stream tonight. So uh, check out the Face It platform afterwards as well, because obviously you can see now their pug system has built in overtime, whereas obviously if you play matchmaking, not only is it 64 tick, but if it's a draw, that's the end of the match. Whereas here, there has to be a winner. <laughs> someone's got to go up, someone's got to go down. So uh, if you want to have some experience with overtime, etc., having your MR5, um, check out the Face It system. You can win knives, etc., on there. I think you can win some huntsman knives for uh, yeah, topping topping your league and so on. So, uh, so yeah, check it out and um, have some 128 tick goodness. It is free for the pug system, so get in there. And after this match, if you want to wait a few hours, well, well I'll, I'll still be here casting until like 6 a.m. or something, and he will be sleeping. Then I'll be then sleeping you can stick with around. my with my. I'll be. Ha I'll have a raffle sign up somewhere for you. 
Yeah. Uh, I'll be yeah. My phone will be thinking of you with the Apple sign, but I'll be fast asleep, bro. And we're gonna be live in one minute, guys. So stay tuned for the overtime. And I imagine a lot of there are a lot of skins online for this match, James. Yeah, I I imagine there are a lot of people out of their DX racer chairs <laughs> celebrating at that beautiful play from Copenhagen Walls, only to have those Asimov orbs snatched from them mm -hmm. by a timeout from unwanted. Copenhagen Wolves had 66% as well. Oh so, uh, they should actually, I, I would be actually expecting more than that. Really? Kind of, yeah. I think yeah. those, I think those unwanted betters are going to be rubbing their clammy hands together, <laughs> hoping for uh -huh. uh, some more tense action and hopefully a victory here. So we're going to have unwanted on the CT side first. Uh, Makalele not looking to uh, stare at the plants this time on this first round, although he does start with 16k. Oh no. That's so cruel. <laughs> first badges, now chickens. I can't I take this. <laughs> RSBCA, man, they're, they're going to be knocking any moment. And we have, of course, Copenhagen Wolves. As we said, they're playing it slow right now. Th they're, we didn't really see many set plays from them uh, from second mid. They're actually doing that right now into the A bomb site. And we can see Michael Ellie there. He's actually ready for this right over behind that smoke at library. Great position going to catch off Carrigan. There's one more player, SMS, spraying for his life, not able to find anything. Michael Ailey holding down the line there over towards library, and that is going to be crucial. Now Copenhagen Wolves have so much pressure moving into the site. They have the bomb site, but they need that plant. There it is. They do barely get it. And PBM is actually left, putting it to a two-on-two. Two. Fast trades here, living it on two versus two, but they have to find where the T's are. They don't really know where they are at the moment. Now Pimp has exposed his position, but his teammate is still on the bomb site, completely unknown to the CTs. The flames, the flames, the carpet of flames, but time is running out here. Can Cajun hold? He cannot, but are they going to have enough time for this? Do they have the kit? Yeah, they've they both the kit? got kits. Of so course yeah. they do. It's, it's all good in the hood. Yeah, it would be so complacent just not to buy a kit in the overtime when you've got like 16. Those balloons thousand. are really weird. Like, I mean, I can take the confetti, but the balloons are just kind of... I want to shoot them, but they don't, they don't pop. The balloons are a bit it's odd. Let's just leave the balloons to overpass, shall it's we? It's really sad. Just stick with the confetti. Do those balloons pop? Can you pop those balloons? Absolutely you can, yeah. I, I, that, I spend so most that, of my time on overpass popping yeah. balloons. I know the amount of control I'm a balloon popper. it takes not to pop those in official matches. It's amazing. I'm a balloon popper. But it's better than it's better than, you know, kicking badges. You're never gonna let that go, are you? No. I don't think so. You've got a whole league of uh, badger <laughs> trolling <laughs> to put the, up. The with. gifts are on the way, I am sure. <laughs> yeah. Alright, so again, Copenhagen Wolves going with what looks like a very, very similar play, but they, they could they could stick in a variation here, take over. Um, Arch again, look, just that pop flash, too strong. A double found there by SMF and Carrigan as they make their way in. And then awaits Pyth in the site like a snake. But you're going to be able to get much with this. Looks like he's only going to get one. And that's not really good enough at this point. Nika, unbelievable mister. That looks straight on him, but apparently not. He's pogo sticking around on Arch and uh, <laughs> manages to get away with his life. Which is quite impressive. But that was a great fake from Copenhagen Wolves. They threw a smoke onto Truck from second mid to suggest that they were all going to rush out of VAPS. And then they bombed through uh, Arch while they were and caught the CTs unawares. And that's a great sight take from them. And again, it's the kind of solid tactics of a, of a team who have been together for a while yeah, coming I'd through here. Yeah, that's, a, that's actually a really, really good point. Especially as, as you have that guy in pit kind of panicking when that smoke goes down. Because his, his position is kind of not useless, but. He has a lot less value as he can't really do much without spraying through the smoke. So Copenhagen Wall is going to tie it up 16 to 16. It seems really impossible to separate these teams. We saw that 8 0 situation at the start where Copenhagen Walls were locking down the CT. They're going to need another CT half yeah. like that. But since then, I mean, they've learned a lot about them, about each other since then. So uh, I true. don't think we'll see a, a repeat of that this time. But um, almost makes me give, want to give unwanted an edge. Yeah, I, th I think um, just to quickly go back to that smoke on the truck, like I think it's less worrisome if you're in pit than it used to be because of the way the smokes are at the moment. They tried to fix them because they're not the most ideal smokes, but uh, you're at such a disadvantage when you emerge from that smoke that if you have a normal M4 as opposed to a silence, once you've got more bullets, and it, you're still at a, I'd say, a significant advantage unless you get flashed, obviously. You can see that Mazaki is actually the floating player there, but uh, Quitten and Pyth are going to be under a lot of pressure here towards this a bomb site as the push comes in. Now they know. Great flashing though. It's running in blind. Pyth decapitating two players in a row, and it is going to be a really strong position for him to hold now. Quitten, he's still alive as well. Seven health, but it's more than enough time for those players from B to swing on by and help them out. Nico to get a frag, but really 
it's uh, there's not much left for him to do at this point. That round was like brutal CS deathmatch. <laughs> yeah. But uh, Nico gets one frag, but I don't know. I, I almost think that maybe just keep the AWP alive. How much money do they have? Oh, they're doing. Fine. Mm. They're doing. Oh, they're doing more. Bags than of money. MR5. They have a. They got cash in. They, they got cash stuffed in their underwear, in their dirty soil Y fronts, in their socks. <laughs> they have they got cash they got for like a huge vault. Stacks and, and in their cartoon, armpits. Cartoon duck to swim around. In. They got the Glock phase. They got it all going on. They got a Mac 10 swinging out. Nico again with the aggressive mid push, just solo YOLO with the AWP. How dare you say Fico, that? Fico, Fico, Nico, no fear. <laughs> James, it's too it's late. Good, it's a good thing that you're done after this. It's too, it's, <laughs> it's too late, but hey, I'm going to sleep soon. I know. It's, it, uh, rub it in more, please. <laughs> rub it in more. So here we go. Once again, Copenhagen Wolves trying to get themselves some map control. They're working their way up banana. We have Unwanted playing it very steadily here. PB ready with a pop flash to bounce it over those uh, against those barrels. But uh, the push just never seems to quite come. And mm. Copenhagen Wolves feel very good at baiting out these grenades. Yeah. I mean, if I was in the position of PB here, I would have thrown about five flashes by now. And he's uh, he's holding on to that one. He's holding it really tight. all they have now is the flashes to stop the pushes. All the smokes exactly. are gone. This is, this is the last stand for them. But um, it, again, it does burn so much time down. And it's, it's the Jonas is still on the tees to uh, clear the site and get a safe plant down before the time runs out. And the time running out is why we're in overtime right now. And of course, we're actually seeing uh, the push there on mid. And they actually sold this fake pretty well because they got They're pushing the pushing B. They've cleared B. Away. And Michael Ailey there in the back smoked off. Zaki also smoked off from Paul. Going to get some damage with the spray there. But they just have to wait. There's just nothing they can do with these smokes down. They really sold that fake well. Copenhagen Wolves seem very effective at, at doing that. We've got Mazaki there. We begin first from construction, edging in. Still got a lot of time to play with both in that corner. Oldest trick in the book, but it's probably going to work as they just go down one after the other. And again, Michael Lilly left with this AWP. There's not much for him to do with it. Nice little no scope, but what does it really do at this point? Gets his life just ended. Ooh, he was a fraction of a click away from getting that kill yeah. there. It was a close one. 70 to 17 now. And it feels like Copenhagen Wolves are doing really well on the T half. And if they bring their CT as strong as they did in the first half, I know you said that, you know, I wanted to know more about them now, but I still feel like Copenhagen Wolves have such a big edge on that CT side that this is looking bad for Unwanted. Yeah, I think Unwanted will need to change the way they react to their frags on the uh, T side if they are to come out on top here. It will be the first team to get 21 rounds to go through to the next round of this 50k qualifier. 50k. There's a suitcase full of cash potentially waiting for one of these teams a few months from now. Some months down the line, but still, they've got to start here with the win here. And there goes Carrigan, entry fragger. Not able to find anyone. Unwanted quickly disappearing from the angles. Michael Ellie falling all the way back to library, going to find himself the stop on Carrigan. Stole. And again, it's a very similar round. We've got the B split coming into play. SMF is uh, sneaking around. Ooh, gets his head ripped off by Makalele. And the CTs with five against three should have uh, not the worst time holding this bomb site. I think there was a team flash there on the uh, B bomb site, but um, no push just yet from the T's. And there's the first frag from Nico, and they're going to go with the bomb on this site. Very important kill there from Nico. They have to keep going, though. They've got to be fast because already Unwanted are going to be on top of them with this retake attempt. Running in from CT spawn, no smokes to cover them. It's just an all-out brawl here in the open spaces towards that B bomb site. And Unwanted are just cleaning house, loving the fact that there's no grenades to stop them. And they just murder, absolutely murder the walls here. And they, that retake was just too clean. Um, what, what's a, there's a common flashbang on the B bomb site yep. from Oranges where you... Um, bounce a flash off the black barrels, which bounces in yeah, towards yeah. the entrance to B. Yeah, and uh, Nico, Nico heard, he heard the bounce, and he l he ran into the corner where you hide sometimes as a CT with Mag Seven okay. because he because you can't be sure where it's going to land. Sometimes it lands towards pool, you, sometimes you it lands closer. You mean this one? Yeah, off there. So off he there. he he heard the bounce and immediately ran to the corner, so he didn't get flashed, and that was uh, really important with their their initial take of the bomb site there, and just a little detail that's worth mentioning.
Because I've, I have, I've never seen someone like clearly hear the flash being bounced there. Normally, yeah, it's a very effective flash um, for stopping pushes there. But Nico, obviously, he knew what was going on straight away, and uh, it's good play by him to keep his vision. Yeah, I mean, pop flashes are sometimes just you just can't deal with them. Like, it's, you yeah, just get pop that, flash they're, that's, they're too good. That's it's what they are by design. Exactly, and. So it is definitely nice. Look at this edging out. Oh, that doesn't take that shot. He felt a bit merciful today. It seems. Hmm. It's, like, I, I it's give mind games. It's mind games. I could take you, but no, I'm gonna find you later and exactly. knife you in the back instead. He gets to decide when they die. It was too yeah. early. It was too soon. Yeah. It was too soon. Not you. Not yet. <laughs> it's all in Mizaki's greater plan. Yeah, but there is an AWP on both sides, so it'd be interesting to see how yeah. uh, Nico is using his AWP on the CT side. You saw how aggressive he was. On the T side, just running up mid on his own, no need for teammates, and uh, being a bit more passive now. He sees the terrorist pushing towards the uh, arch side. Yeah, unwanted. Very good at getting out of boiler and actually pushing the, the CTs back. You can see Nico in a very uh, exposed position Ooh. there. Mizaki going to find the kill right there. Some F in the side. Going to see what he's able to actually accomplish from here. He's got some support. Oh, <laughs> he actually fell to his Zephy Crater there in the pit. And SMF holding strong just for long enough to make it a three on two. Michael Eddie and Mizaki left here on the bomb site. Michael Eddie going for the plant. And Mizaki with a second kill with that AWP. And now Michael Eddie after the bomb plant back into play. Cajun B. He is left. Has to look left and right at the same time. If I'm wanting to peek him, well, oh, but there is the 101. There's no way it's, but there it is. Mizaki with the peek. And that was a fantastic round from Mizaki there. Not normally the player you'd expect the, the orb shenanigans from, but he delivered. Yeah, on a subject of orb shenanigans, one technical detail worth noting. When Nico um, was looking towards Arch from Library, and you, you could kind of semi-see the player there, but when you're spectating someone who's looking at smoke, you can see more in through the smoke than they can in their own vision. I have yeah, no yeah. idea why. It's really, <laughs> it's a really bizarre technical kind of anomaly, which I think really needs to be fixed. Um, but uh, yeah, when when you're the player, you can see less than when you're like his teammate who's dead spectating or something. But oh, this is so good from Cajun B, going for the push there. That pop flash got him a free frag. Well played, Copenhagen Walls, taking Mizaki out of play, who in the last round was so crucial to the success of Unwanted, and. That free pickup is now going to have to. It's going to force the hand of unwanted slightly, as it's kind of okay to sack a player on the T side for informational position, but that was pretty much for free now. So unwanted have to really find themselves a play here or some frags of their own. Going on to SMF, bit of a close call, but he makes the frag and gets out of there. Well played to SMF, as now he holds the line with his team in the back of A. And look at the <laughs> the paranoia, motherfucker, <laughs> just because he can. The early pick on Badana is a great psychological advantage when we're on CTs. Like it's the, the two remaining plays on T side completely retreated all the way down Banana. I mean, uh, maybe they were scared of a following a follow up uh, pop flash and peak. But again, that's the that's the psychological advantage you get. And it is going to be a three on five now. They are going to commit to the B bomb site push here with 20 seconds remaining on the clock. PD is running blind, spamming that AK. It is going to be unwanted with the site though. Or, well, they got a guy in the back boxes to deal with. And Cajun B will fall all the new boxes. Michael Lee looking for an opportunity to plant here, but he is all alone. Does get the bomb down just in time, thanks to the smoke. One on three, and off in a couple M4s. I've seen him do crazier things. Going for the peak shot, can't quite find it in time, and there you go. So, Copenhagen Wolves not out of it yet. Unwanted, need two more rounds to... Uh, and Copenhagen Wolves' party, but the party continues with the confetti and bananas. Bananas? Balloons? On banana. <laughs> James, I'm calling endless overtime. <laughs> and it's going to happen. Endless it's overtime. It's going to keep going. So Imagine we'll, we'll double, double, double MR5 overtime. Double MR5 overtime. It can happen. It has happened. I casted one not so long ago. I was in one. You not too long ago. On Face It, yeah. <laughs> it was, it's like almost an, another entirely extra additional game. It is. And here we see similar rounds here from Unwanted. They're not, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Quitten has been very effectively able to get himself up into the apartments uh, multiple times in this match. We're going to see him, you know, leaping in. He's got himself PB to try to help him flash him in the positions. And 
Whitten back down to Boiler. Yeah, Again, so many players have come off the back of Whitten getting in good positions here out of Boiler. Yeah, see, CPH Wolves are playing apps very passively, but it's a stark difference to how we've seen Fnatic play it of old, although you could say the old lineup was, uh, they were overextending too much, but then with the new lineup, we've seen the debating with one person in bedroom and one person um, opposite for crossfire, etc. But um, pretty much throughout, throughout this whole match, they've uh, played it from pit, um, and it's, it went well for them so far. And it's actually not the strongest setup ever on A right now, but Unwanted, they have no idea to know that, that there's two players sitting in the site, which uh, usually you don't really want more than one actually on the site itself. Mm, but you've got you to stay unpredictable though, haven't you? And uh, yeah, I mean, unpredictability can definitely factor into play here. And we're going to see... Ooh, what is he doing? He just naded himself. They he right. tried to sell the fake with the uh, smoke towards the pit. Ooh, Good anti-Molotov smoke there. And then Pike goes, good entry frag, gets the second as well. Cage and B does fall. Unwanted, they're on the side. The bomb is down. Three on five at this point. This is going to be difficult. Yeah, just this, <laughs> no kidding. This is going to be incredibly hard. Pimp, though, finding the taps in the long distance. SMF also putting some damage in there. And Pyfe going to put the stop on Pimp. Nico making his way up pool. Can't be afforded the missing any shots. Takes down PB. SMF chiming in with one as well. It's a two on two, but the bomb is ticking away. Oh, Ever wow, that faster. Plant. Nico. Oh, Nico going to go down. SMF. He's playing the time so well. Michael Lele just peeking forwards, just being so annoying. And the bomb will go off. And unwanted are going to take the round. Really, really well played there. The retake almost almost happened as well, but unwanted there on match point. That is the most exposed plant I've ever seen on yeah, the bomb site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on the steps, I didn't even know you could plant you a bomb. Oh there. yeah, you didn't know that. There's there's been like a new plant I've discovered on cash as well, which I didn't know existed on on the the A bomb site as well. You can like plant it on the other side. It's so weird. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Planting this game is weird. So it's match point here for Unwanted. If they win yep. this round, they win. Copenhagen Wolves need two of the remaining two rounds for double overtime. They do have a full buy, Nico with the AWP. And again, you can see Unwanted, they're doing the same thing. Just look, Whitten, PB, trying to get themselves into apartments. It's like they're, you know, they're buddying up. They've got a buddy system going on right now. And, you know, Pyfe. The, uh, the front man here trying to push them back and back, waste those nades of the players on B. It can, it can become this amazing B finish where they get an easy take of the site and have a strong possibility for you know, good positioning after the retakes. Because Grenades delaying them, that's what really allows Copenhagen Wolves uh, players from A to get in position in time so that the unwanted plant situation on B doesn't really ever get comfortable. Again, we've got uh, one of the, well, Nico heading towards Speedway here, just uh, keeping his options open. Can still mount a defense onto Arch, but uh, get you know get one pick unless they choose to push CT then. Oh, Pyth's position here, this is so incredibly good. Pyth can do so much damage from this spot right 20 now. 20 seconds remaining. Oh my god, and they, they sold this fake pretty damn well with that Molotov. They're all over A right now, and the frags are coming in all over the place. The A setup is strong at this point. Great crossfires coming in from the Wolves Can as Unwanted go in. Whitten. Can he make the spray work? He does. SMF goes down. And that is for the, the bomb's two down. Two. They're not going to win the round. Oh, they got no time. What? They, take, they took so long. I don't believe it. They had that. Oh, uh, no. the, bomb, the bomb, I'm not sure if it was on balcony or pit. It's hard to tell from yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it might have been on the balcony, actually. If the, yeah, if, the, if you send the, the, bomb, the bomber to balcony, there is that chance that it can just, just get dropped in pit. And if you end up smoking off pit as well, that uh, is just a recipe for after disaster. such great play. Yeah, that was fantastic. They the round that. was there if they plant the bomb. And but now, position, oh my god. Yeah, I mean, it, now it's still... I mean, Cajun B's got a FAMAS. Well, there's two FAMASs, in fact, on Copenhagen Wolves' side, so... Um, by no means is it a full buy from their team. And again, the same, exactly the same round again from Unwanted. They know what's working, and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And like you say, that round was just... That's one of those rounds where you say to each other, guys, we, we had every opportunity to win that, we just didn't execute properly. Mm. And this that, is the last chance saloon here for Copenhagen Wolves. They, got, they, they were fortunate to uh, survive that round, but um, no frag to my other team oh, yet. That, that's actually a smoke for Carr on, uh, on Banana. So he's uh, throwing his smoke to be nice to the banana guys. And look at this. Unwanted, they switched it up for this round. Copenhagen Wolves are expecting s some kind of play on banana as usual. But in fact, Unwanted are making it happen on A right now. And 
What is going on with Auto Director? Please, Auto Director, please. Station B gonna get dropped there. Nico holding the site down, preventing that plant. Key positions being maintained by Copenhagen Wolves, gunning them down. PB goes down and we get overtime number two. Double overtime, baby. Somebody get me some ice it's, cream. It's infinite. <laughs> Why do you need ice cream? Is that a... I don't know. I just wanted to say ice cream. I don't know. I, f I feel like... I mean, studio lights, a bit warm. Ice cream would be nice. A bit toasty. Yeah. Where do you get ice cream at this time of night in London? You must be able to... I'm somewhere. sure there's it's a London, place. Right? I'm sure there's there a is, place. There's a place. Some deep, Guaranteed dark, a place. underground ice cream place. They're going straight into it. No breaks. No ice cream. Here we go again. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were, if you th I mean, if you think about the people, again, who have bet skins on, like, a lot of skins on this, like... They're thinking, yes, unwanted, gonna win again. Denied. Timeout. <laughs> exactly. Oh, Pipe going for it there. That last round from, from unwanted was genius as well. You Are they gonna push that. the B bomb site though? That's the question. Or, you know, the, look where the bomb is. The bomb's in no man's land now. But they could still try and clear the site. It would even give them an option to fake and push towards A. It, it feels like Copenhagen Wolves have had enough of it right now. They're actually switching up their, their play completely. Going this time in. they have committed. See, they've made an adjustment. This time they have committed yeah, yeah, two yeah. people to the B-bomb site after a pick. But the bomb is still nowhere near anywhere it can be planted. So, uh, and still no bomb site has been taken. They do have the top of mid, so they've got fairly reasonable um, territory on the map. However, they don't have a bomb site, and that's what's key as this clock runs down towards zero. And here we go. Again, as you pointed out previously, this, this might not just be entering yourself into a 50k tournament, which maybe you win, maybe you won't. It's getting an organization, and this is a hugely important match into this second overtime. Unwanted with that snap play on B, gonna get the bomb down finally, and both teams forced to mix it up now. It's overtime number two. They know exactly what either one has been doing, and they're both trying to play on that now. They're really trying to. The, the last overtime, we saw that minimally, but now it's, it's really gonna start you know, being a big, big deal, these mind games between these two teams, as uh, Unwanted perhaps go for the frags, you know, try to hunt down the remaining players of Copenhagen Wolves, who can definitely uh, Cajun cause B some just trouble. made the longest rotate <laughs> in history. Inferno history. And there just isn't the time. There just isn't the time. I mean, it it's the first it. round. It's the first round of the overtime. So, I mean, do you, do you just try regardless to um, retake? I think I I don't I think so. I mean I mean you, you you've got to you've got you've got to budget for five rounds. I think I think not if you have an AWP, but I think if you just just have a rifle. I mean that's a huge difference. Like the the AWP is yeah. is two times. But the how cost do you budget for five rounds? A lot of time. I mean not every tournament's MR five. Some are MR three. So you know that. Uh, but you do you do get less money in that. But I don't know the 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 economy mass behind uh, five rounds and retakes. I. I mean, the w the w I mean, the, the way I would look at it is if you have an AWP, save the AWP because if everyone else has... If that's you can that's, buy a, third, if that's a third else, of your money, that AWP. Exactly, and you can buy two M4s for that. That's exactly the same price, basically. It's, a, it's, a little, it's like $100 more expensive, or $50 more expensive, but it's the same thing. So we're going to see again Unwanted. They're going a bit, you know, a bit more of their bread and butter players coming in right now with him trying to push boiler he gets denied by nico they they can expect it they can expect him to be there at this point and nico is ready usually nico is is in this position but we can see he's actually he had the quad angle into boiler he switched it up now changing position that movement is very strong as uh, the ct orpa as you pointed out previously in in the uh, matches earlier today james and with that with that frag they should be looking pretty strong but nico he gets caught out of position there not even able to turn the corner and throw a flash in time. And there goes the Molotov to stop Unwanted getting on top of the A bomb site to give Copenhagen Wolves B players time to rotate. Here goes FMS, close range. Oh. SMF though, not able to make it happen. Here's Michael Lely and Matt Sacking strong, but not for long. Copenhagen Wolves with a very nice cleanup. One round apiece. That was uh, that was an interesting round. I, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty, right? But after this kill on Nico, it almost feels like they should just just go straight through, just go for that that B play. Mm, I B think there's no wrong decision either way. But uh, they they have been stopped a lot in this area. But they've gone for that quite a few times. That's the only reason why I say that. Just yeah. from some of the past but rounds. So, but then there's there's some theories like people will will do the same drill and try and adjust something slightly to see if you know if uh, it makes all the difference, but um, 
Nico there with a nice opening frag on Maxaki, and that's the AWP down for the time being, at least. So uh, again, a very slow, slow start here. Whitten, he's Whitten and PB. They're not confident to, re especially after having Maxaki down like that. They're not confident to go for that push and boiler. Again, it's it's that situation where you can kind of afford to go for the risk of the player. They had that in Masaki. They can't do it again. Now the combined push onto the B bomb site. We see Cajun B holding it down there. Carrigan did definitely do a good job. Also, Cajun B in a, such a fantastic spot to pick up these kills. Gets himself another one. I wonder if his uh, silence is exposed. Wow, he does get another kill as well. <laughs> Flying Cajun B. I think Cajun Chicken when I uh, see his name, but that's a. <laughs> Discussion for another day. So Makaleli, last man standing on this. Can he at least get a bomb plant? It's it should be pretty impossible because as soon as they hear the sound, they will just peek him and he will just die. So he has to def he has to go for the fake every time now. And uh, hope that he doesn't get uh, get burned alive. So he's opting to run away or he wants to get a kill. He knows he can't get the bomb down, so he's going to go for a kill. Because at this point as well, you know, you're starting to see... Yeah, is it worth it? I mean, they the have, they've have, they got bags of money. Yeah, it's a, it's an interesting one. But um, it was really good. I just want to say it was really good uh, positioning from Cajun B. He got the first frag from Oranges. Then he moved to the opposite side of the site. So obviously, his he killed the guy. The rest of his teammates don't have vision of the site yet. They're expecting him to be on one side. He's on the other side. Pushes through the smoke on top of the coils. Gets another frag. He then does some flying judo business and uh, manages to get one more frag out of it. So that was really well played. At least the first two frags by... Uh, Cajun B. Unwanted. He went down. He went down uh, on his sword afterwards. So oh, it was uh, this. This a, is actually a good hold. Uh, quite a good setup here from Copenhagen Walls. They are looking really good for a very strong B defense. Paragon has to make a couple kills here. He's doing a decent job. Oh, but the spray down. Mazaki coming in huge with the double. Nico, good response there. Just aggressive all play before they can get that bomb down. Very important. The bomb is getting planted. It is a three on two at this point. Witten and Mizaki left to do the job here with this site defense. And uh, they are going to go down pretty easily. Nico, Nico gets a two a man beast. with the pea shooter. I think that was a three a three kill from him there as well uh, with that close range orb. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen three man spray downs with that gun? What, what with the CZ? Yeah. I've seen Michael Ellie do it. I've seen two three man spray downs. I shed a tear every time. <laughs> I cry every time. Cry every time. So K Copenhagen Wolves, uh, a much better set of initial rounds for them. Yeah. They are they have the lead by two rounds. Again, they're only three rounds away from victory look at these, here. Look at these frags. <laughs> wow. We're looking at, we're looking 40, at 40 bombs, bombs yeah. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> no 40 one bombs all right. No that's a real balloons. party. Yeah. No wonder there's balloons coming out the, the bomb. Oh my god. So here we go, the movement up. Banana. And you know, we have Quit and PB, they're, they're going to go for this uh, movement here up on apartments. Cajun B again with the aggression. That's he, a really important frag because yeah. Pith has been opening up the B bomb site round after round after round. And now he's down. He's the first frag in this round. So I'm interested to see how uh, Unwanted proceed with this round. And Cajun B does that, but very seldomly. It's, it happens, but not enough to be a routine. So yeah, you, I mean, you can't ever count for Pith has been happening. going on like Freiburg on this map on towards the B bomb yeah. site as terrorists. So that is a very key frag. And now the, the terrorists are forced. They, they can't really go for any more picks because, again, this map is very hard to find angles if you don't get flash. Like this angle, Nico gets basically an advantage because he knows where they have to come from. But they don't know to look left or right. And Nico going to take down Mazaki. And that is going to be a three on five right now. And splitting off there, they wanted to get him up to cause some trouble towards CT Arch to try to help this be push. But it is going to be such a good defense. It's surely Carrigan gets the one. And there comes the second kill. Quetin, though, going insane with a double. But it's not going to be enough. And it is going to be a pretty decent half here for Copenhagen Wolves. Copenhagen Wolves start on the T side now. And they have a big buffer to pry, test, and burn the unwanted hold on the CT side of Inferno here. This is going to be very hard for unwanted to stop Copenhagen Wolves from getting two rounds. Oh, yeah. But you know, James, there will be more overtimes. There could be more overtimes. There will be. I'm calling it. There could be. Infinite overtimes, you're going to see. <laughs> Infinite overtimes. No AWP from the terrorists there. They are, it does look like they're going to go for the bum rush rather than the slow play with the, uh, or slower play, should I say, yep. with the AWP here, which I think is the right decision oh. here. Yep. And we actually see Mizaki moving into a very forward position here. 
Uh, we don't see from either of these teams, uh, they don't usually occupy Kara at all, and he's actually walking all the way down with his orb to Logs. He might just find himself. Nico, oh, Ooh. the tap, the double shot onto Zaki's face. And that is painful. <laughs> I don't think he's going to want to do that again. That is worst case yeah. scenario for Unwanted. And now they know that there's one guy alone on B. And they, they have a lot of ways to play this. They can just wait it out. They've got so much time. Force Unwanted to go. Oh, no. Okay, just get the frag. Nico gets another one. That second pickup. And even Carrigan, he makes the kill over at CT Arch. What the hell are Unwanted even going to do now in this round? They're just all over the place. One from Banana. Two frags coming in, though, to make it a two on three. But Pyfe is incredibly low at this point. Incredibly low. Quitting with uh, the copyright infringers with a lot of work to do. Yeah, this has all gone terribly wrong for Unwanted. And I think the curtain is being called here for the CT team. Copenhagen Wolves look very... In there. They are in a very strong position to go to head to the next round. Yeah, really well played by Nico. That's just that's just a fantastic individual performance. Outperforming the AWP there with the uh, the two bullets from that AK, finding the head of Mizaki. And of course, Mizaki, look at his money. He's He has no money. He's been buying up those AWPs and he's, he's running dry at this point. Does get himself uh, an M4, but this is make or break now, of course. So, unwanted. Are they going to play this standard or are they going to put something special into play? It's like it is fairly standard. Yeah, we'll see how this round goes. One round from four is all Copenhagen Wolves require to uh, end this overtime malarkey. <laughs> but uh, we'll see what happens here. I mean, that that was a brutal round. They have they have the uh, synergy to execute on this T side, far superior to uh, what I want. Unwanted. It's going well for them. That's two frags already. They've got three people on squad right now, and Makaleli can't do the solo hold. And there's only Maxaki left, and this is going to be this. One versus five, he's not going to do it. Very clean, and there you go. It ends, James. The Copenhagen Wolves. It has ended. The Danes. There do is no third overtime. Supreme. Yeah, that was again. You know, it's the um, the advantage provided by uh, longevity and stability that allows Copenhagen Wolves to execute like that on the T yeah. sides, and they managed to bring it through. I mean, and unwanted were so close. They were so oh, close yeah, in the yeah, last yeah. overtime. They just couldn't get the plant because the bomb just wasn't where it needed they're, to be. They're going to be so gutted after that. They, they were that. They, they were that close. They to played so well together. I wasn't expecting them to play so well together, especially on a map like Inferno. You know, teams do really well on Inferno because, again, we explained. You know, there's so many set plays to take into account. Yeah. There's there's uh, so many techni technicalities. It's not as much like Dust Two, which is is much easier to play with a mixed team, or even a map like Mirage. You can you can tailor it much better for a mixed team. Inferno, I think, is one of the harder maps to play with a with a, a team that's not been together for a long time. Yeah. So uh, absolutely gutting for Unwanted, and I I wonder if they'll stick together or what their plan is is next. But uh, definitely congratulations to Copenhagen Wolves who who definitely deserve it. Yeah, they go through to the next round, so they will play again tomorrow in the uh, quarterfinals, I believe. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be back tomorrow with the remainder of the uh, European qualifier. Yeah, and uh, if you guys are, <laughs> if you want to stick around, if, I don't know if you're if Europeans, you, hey, if, if you're you, Americans. If you've had too much caffeine, join DDK later on for the uh, yeah. American qualifier. I'll be doing what we just did. Again, for the U.S. qualifiers, of course, you've got that to look forward to. So stay tuned for that. Keep your eye out if you're going to be up late or if you're an American and it's, you know, it's still relatively early for you. Keep your eye, uh, eyes peeled for that. And otherwise, uh, I guess we'll see you tomorrow. Well, in the meantime, check out the Face It platform. Yeah. Play some Counter-Strike. Yeah, play some Counter-Strike. I haven't played for days. My yeah. internet's dead at home. It's been dead since last Wednesday. I, I have got, I've got the itches, man. I need to That's get, like I need to get on there. You've like crazy. You've been doing productions left, right, and center. Yeah, I've been all over the shop. But um, I will be back on the pugs, hopefully by Wednesday, I guess, since we're casting tomorrow yep, as well. Exact so same. Yeah, check out those. And check out also the skins on the CSGO market. Um, it's thanks to you guys voting up the skins that we are able to put on things like a $50,000 league and then stream it for you guys yeah. as well. So 20K definitely. 20K to 50K. It's, it's Exactly. It's 20K for spring league and it's now we've working, gone to 50K. Guys. Two and a half times more. Mm-hmm. It's pretty damn strong. Yeah, let's get that Mag 7 in. I want to see JW doing some shenanigans with that Mag 7. The but USP is quite nice as well. It is. Kridium and those skins. He's, he's a fiend. He's, done, he's, he's put in work. Yeah, he definitely has. So, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning in here to Face It TV again. Check out tomorrow to see how the uh, qualifiers conclude here, the qu closed qualifiers for that massive league we've been talking about all night. And we'll see you then. So, see you later. <laughs>